Welcome to week 25 of our Sewing Room Organization Challenge. I cannot believe we are to the end of this challenge. These videos have been sometimes challenging to get out for me, uh, but overall it's been a really wonderful experience. I've learned a lot about myself, about my space, and I feel like I can move forward with um, maybe customizing my space some after this process. I hope you did too. So before we get started on what we're going to talk about this week to close things out, my name is Chris O'Neill from Sew the Distance and I'm so happy you've joined me today. If you haven't seen any of these and this is your very first video, I'll put a link to a playlist up here. I think it shows up up here and uh, then you can catch up and go through all of the 25 weeks of this challenge. As many of you know, I'm a former teacher and in teaching, we talk a lot about reflection. So I'm gonna bring that to you too. We are gonna reflect on this process. So first of all, there's a PDF to download that lists all of the weeks and what we talked about. I even left an extra box there for you to put a check mark if you want to go back in and try some of these again or maybe some things that you missed and this way you can keep track and even maybe do it again next year. So as we take some time to reflect, let's talk about what worked really well for you. So for me, that was the yardage when we talked about that. I think, it, I don't know, it was early on. I think it was month two, week six or something. Uh, and we talked about the yardage and I talked about how I was gonna try using the comic book boards to store my fabric. I love this method. For me, it works great. I can take fabric out and slip it back in when I need it. When I come home from a quilt shop, I can put the yardage right onto these boards and it just keeps it so pretty and nice. So I really love that method. There's been a few things. I like also the buttons, how well they're organized they are and a few other things. But for me, yardage, storage, it really has been a maintainable system for me and it works well. How about you? What worked well for you? Please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear. So now let's talk about what didn't work well for you. So for me, that's the scrap management. So I thought I had a really good system. I separated all my scraps in by color. I put them into these baggies. I put these baggies into these laundry baskets that I have. And I thought, oh, I'll just take a baggie out every week. I'll press it and cut it into five inch squares and 10 inch squares and two and a half inch squares and it'll be great. And although I do tend to do that and I do like cutting them into usable chunks, I do find that I don't take the time to do it. I'd rather just be quilting and dig through the scraps. So it's become messy again and it does seem to keep growing because scraps just seem to multiply as you make things, right? Uh, so I have to figure out a new system for my scrap management. So what I did to help me kind of reflect on this is I took that document that I have up on my blog and I highlighted the items that I'm still struggling with or that maybe I need to revisit. So you can see I have a few things highlighted, not a lot, but a few, and scraps is absolutely one of those that I need to figure something else out. So how can you fix those things that you just didn't have a good system for? And maybe this whole process was really wonderful and you didn't have anything like that, but I'm willing to bet there was some system that you thought would really work that didn't. Learn from that and move on from that. Uh, as human beings, sometimes we beat ourselves up and think that if we find a system that works that we need to stick with it, even if it's really not working. And sometimes we just need to reevaluate that. So on a personal note, I just wanted to mention a few of my favorites of this process and my absolute favorite video and the most eye-opening for me and probably the hardest to make was the work triangle vi video. If you haven't seen that, I'll put a link up here to it. My least favorite video was probably uh, the one where I had to do the catch up video where it was all over the place with the thread, the bobbins and the batting just because I didn't have any direction with it and I felt very unorganized and regretful that I didn't include those things in earlier videos. I hope you enjoyed this. I am so grateful to all of you. Thank you so much for coming on this journey with me. I hope your rooms are incredible. And as for your homework, it's just to enjoy your space. Uh, on a personal note, you can see behind me over here, my sewing machine is missing. It is in the shop. It is sick and uh, I uh, broke, I think the tension disc. So it might be hopefully repairable, but it might not be. Uh, I'm very sad about it. I have my backup machine over here that I've been using and it's just not the same. I miss my machine. So hopefully, hopefully it'll be back and running in no time and I'll be able to sew up some beautiful things too.
I'm looking forward to sharing some more videos with you. I have some tutorials coming up soon, and uh, I have some other lessons from an old quilt and all kinds of things as we come into the fall season. Thank you again for joining me on this journey. Please make sure you take some time to sew, and I'll see you soon. Bye.